and welcome to the world of Matt's Headroom. You know, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, as I'm one of the OGs of the series Breaking Bad, and I also thought one of the most creative pieces of work I've ever seen done was also uh, What About Sal? Um, but as you know, El Camino has come out, which is uh, Vince Gilligan's uh, uh, sequel, I guess, to the Breaking Bad series. And uh, I guess there's only one thing that I really would like to say about it. I don't really have to continue on the tape, but I think for the purpose of, uh, you know, being valid and reliable, I should. But one thing I could really just say about the movie uh, is like this, you know. <sighs> oh. Yep. Breaking Bad ended bad. That's all I got to say. Um, you know, I, I know that everybody knows what the movie's about, so I don't think I'm ruining it for anybody. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's supposed to be the sequel to what happened to the character of Jesse uh, after everybody else got killed, basically. Okay? And, uh, you know, after looking back, and I've, I've watched the movie about three times, um, I actually stole it by doing a uh, month free trial with Netflix so I could see it as soon as I could, but God, it wasn't worth it at all. But anyway, um, this is just my opinion. I'm not trying to tell anybody how to feel. You might love it, uh, but I really was disappointed. Um, you know, I, 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 in retrospect, I thought to myself, since we all know what it's about, you know, about Jesse and what happens to him, right? Uh, I thought it would have been actually more intriguing to study uh, what happens to uh, uh, Walter Jr. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, here's a guy who's who's physically handicapped and without parents and uncles and, and, a, and a crazy kleptomaniac maniacal aunt. That would have made a much more interesting story, I think. And I think he's a better actor altogether than uh, Aaron Paul. Uh, that, that would have been an interesting direction to go in, but to try to figure out what happens to Jesse. Oh, look, Meatball's going to settle down. She's going to be a good girl. Thank you, Meatball. I love you. Uh, in, instead of, uh, you know, doing something that was interesting, like, for instance, what about Sal? I, I thought that was an interesting diversion, uh, which I'm going to go into later, uh, of keeping that same theme going and keeping the same viewers watching and, 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 and intriguing, bringing new viewers in. But uh, El Camino and the story of Jesse and what happens to him is like just one big, you know, like Jesse. <laughs> I mean, you know, how long can you watch that shit for? Um, I think that that uh, Aaron Paul and I'm no great movie critic, but I know some things about film. And I would say that, that Aaron Paul really is a much better, what you'd call, character actor. In other words, a number two guy. Um, although I have an interesting theory I want to go into later about that as well. But I, I, I don't think he's the kind of actor that by himself can basically carry a movie uh, with it. But before I get into the technicalities of why I thought El Camino uh, really ended bad for Breaking Bad, um, I wanted to do just a little bit of history to get you in the mood, if any of you have seen it. I'm, I'm sure most of you have by now. Um, but let's go back to Breaking Bad, because really, this, you see, what about our uh, Better Call Saul, to me, was almost like a stand-up-by-itself television show. I don't know that you necessarily had to know a lot about Breaking Bad, to appreciate some of the beauty of that show. Um, but, um, you know, what, you, but it, this movie just doesn't seem to make it. And I want to compare it to show you why it doesn't make it. Because let's go back to some of the very early moments in Breaking Bad, okay? Just, just for a second. I wrote a bunch of shit down, and I'm sorry, but I, I want to try to create a spirit of what Breaking Bad was really about. 
And what it's turned into uh, with this uh, El Camino Shimino. First of all, let's remember Crazy Tuco, the uh, Hispanic uh, crystal meth drug lord who uh, Walter dropped uh, a bomb of some kind of sulfate that exploded in the street, went crazy, and then he was kidnapped by the guy later and taken to Mexico with the guy's uncle and served tacos and all kinds of stuff. I mean, that was really exciting. Um, how about the psychopathic mute twins, the hitmen? You remember them, the guys that took a shot at Schneider? Oh my God, those guys just reeked of like evil and, and it was almost surreal. It was, it was beautiful, you know? Um, how about Gustavo Fring? Oh my God, what an evil dude. And how polished an actor he is. I wish I could remember his name, but I'm terrible about that stuff. Uh, but, you know, that, that was wonderful. I mean, I think the highlight of that whole series was when Gustavo Fring uh, decided to uh, poison all of the cartel members and they all die around the pool. And then he, is, he takes the poison himself, but he takes an antidote, but it almost kills him anyway. And he runs off and blah, 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 blah happens. It was so exciting. You know, or even we could talk about Aaron Paul, okay? And, you know, as Jesse, when he was forced, basically, I guess, I don't know if he was forced or it was just within him or a combination of both, but when he had to shoot that poor uh, secondary meth cook, whose name escapes me, um, but, you know, he, he she had to shoot him, and uh, it was quite a dramatic scene. And not only that, but the beauty of that scene, as I remember, was the playing of the background music of this old style Italian opera. Um, you know, it kind of goes and then the guy who plays the secondary meth cook is also actually singing along to it. I mean, what a beautiful moment in, in cinema, television, whatever the hell you want to call it. It was beauty in, in, in vision and sound. Uh, what about Gustavo Fring's murder itself? You know, that he comes out of a hospital room with half his face blown off, you know? Uh, again, I've made, you know, reference to the beauty uh, the way I see it as uh, the kleptomaniacal uh, Aunt Marie, who's always morally superior, except she can't keep her hands off stealing shit, right? Or Hank, you know, or of course, R.J. Matei. I hope I pronounced that right, but I mean, that, that he did a great, and I really believe, really mean what I said. I think it would have been far more interesting to see what happened to him, you know, childless, I mean, excuse me, you know, parrotless, has a maniacal, a kleptomaniacal aunt, uh, you know, he's developmentally disabled. I mean, that would have been a very interesting avenue to go up into, but no, we have to watch Jesse and more of his grunts and groans. Now, he's a great actor. Don't get me wrong. I loved him in uh, all of the um, bit parts he had, not bit parts, but big parts that he had. Like for instance, when he's in the hospital after he gets the shit kicked out of him uh, by Schrader and he's bitching out Walter White. Oh my God, that was, that was Aaron Paul at his finest, okay? But you know what the problem is with Aaron Paul? You can only take so much of that without it become, you becoming satiated to it. And then it becomes to look sort of artificial in my humble opinion. Um, uh, what about the, uh, aircraft crash? Wasn't that imaginative and how that whole thing was worked in with that chick and, and, uh, the heroin addiction and all that. I mean, that was beauty. It was wonderful. Oh my God. And what about Walter coming in to rescue, or no, he comes in for some, uh, what's that word, you know, bad reason. And uh, he uh, ends up finding the girl ODing, and he decides to let her die. I mean, boy, that is dark, but drama, you know? And it's also, I think, unfortunately, the real world. Um, but, you know, and also, let's, uh, oh, here's another little scene from that sequence. How about when Mike, who's one of the great, again, character actors, I don't know if Mike could carry a movie by himself, but, but when, when Mike goes to tell the... Uh, uh, Jesse what to do after the reports of the murder uh, and he says um, wait a minute he, he says Mike's response to Jesse is all you say is I woke up she was dead that's all I know and then he slaps him in the face and says say it again 
I woke up, she's dead, she was dead, that's all I know. Wham! I mean, that was drama. I, that was beauty in motion. That was so well thought out. Um, but, but you know, this is not... Wait, let me just see if I have any other good things to say about it. Oh, yeah, I do. Here. How about just Mike himself, the psychopath uh, ex-cop that has a good heart down deep somewhere. Um, oh, gosh, I'm fumbling papers. Oh, big deal. Uh, what about Sal? I mean, you know, I mentioned, and I'm not going to make a big deal out of... Uh, the, the, you know, the movie style, but he's he also is a great character actor, but I think he can stand by himself, you see, I think he's so multifaceted that, that he's very capable of playing different roles within the same role, um, and uh, that was a great movie, and, and Vince Gilligan had the, uh, you know, in, intuitiveness or whatever it took to make a beautiful prequel to Breaking Bad, which would stand alone by itself at first when i saw it i thought well what's he doing is he just trying to make some new thing about sal and then i started seeing the same characters that was brilliant to have those same characters showing up earlier you know before breaking bad ever started i mean that was really beauty um you know what about schrader he speaks for himself uh what about um uh walter and just just the dynamics, and this is something I want to come back to later, the dynamics between Walter and Jesse. That is a character in itself. The whole's greater than the sum of its parts. I've said that a million times. That interaction between Jesse and Walt Sr. is what made the character that I call Walt uh, Jesse. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, but also another thing that was so wonderful, and it took me several viewings to catch on, and then I even had to read an article about it to really absorb it. But did you realize that, like, I probably do this on all TV shows, it just it was more obvious on this one, is that they use um, a color palette. And if you, if you notice, go back and watch some of the episodes, like, for instance, anytime you walk into the Schrader house, it's filled with the color purple and the hue purple through some sort of lens. Every time you walk into the uh, White House, there's, oh, that's a funny slip, uh, the White's house, uh, there are shades of green and brown. And that green mirrors the beautiful green eyes of, uh, of, of uh, Skyler which they focus in on beautifully. You know, it, it, like as much as I hate Skylar, and I'll mention her as long as read it, I hated her. I hated Skylar, but I loved her as an actress and the part she played. I wonder what kind of person she is in real life. But that, that moral superior uh, attitude, but yet the excitement that she would get out of being a co-conspirator was like just, oh, it used to drive me nuts. And she's beautiful too. Um, but this color palette got, well, I'll get back to it later, but, but this color palette, I think, was very important to Breaking Bad. It conveyed the sense of New Mexico. It conveyed certain moods present in certain houses. Um, it, it, that color palette was very, very important and, and part of what really intrigued me in uh, Breaking Bad. And I'm, I've been rapping for a while. I'm going to take a break and uh, I'm gonna come back, okay? So bear with me here, a little bit more music. Be back in a second. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Um, so I hope I've painted a picture uh, for you all of what I personally found, and I'm sure many of you uh, found incredibly uh, dynamic about uh, Breaking Bad, uh, Vince Gilligan's talent, uh, and all the scenes, and there's many more that I, uh, you know, tried to portray as making Breaking Bad such a fantastic series. However, I do want to say something about Breaking Bad, which leads into El Camino, um, and I, 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 it's, it's hard to explain, but I, I think I have this, like, sort of analysis of it, and I, I want to share it with you. You see, I have to admit, I lost a little bit of interest in the last couple of seasons of Breaking Bad. And there, there's a major reason why. Um, you know, if you follow the process of Breaking Bad, 
there's like long periods of like tension building up and then intensity like a murder or something or a blowing up and then there's more and then and it, it it moves very like kind of slowly but it, there's enough intensity there to make you go blue man i can't wait till next week you know like when the kid gets run over on the bicycle for instance that if you remember that famous scene or or when uh jesse's uh new hispanic girlfriend uh gets killed and i think her kid does too if i remember correctly from that rice and cigarette or something but anyway i could have my facts wrong but um what happened in the last two seasons in my opinion and i'm not reading vince's mind but what i think happened was was that he wanted to start killing people off and coming to a conclusion and that makes perfect sense to me and it seems to me like the vehicle that he used was this last group of bad guys and to me they were the most uninteresting uh white trailer trash psychopathic meth freaks that really didn't belong on such a creative show and they really didn't provide much except just a lot of grossness and 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 you know whatever you want to call it um but uh i think he used that group of people in the the service of trying to create um a context unto which all these other people could end up getting wiped out like walter and skyler and schrader and you know they all sort of get wiped out of the picture through the context of this broader story about these disgusting hillbilly morons okay uh i think the whole thing was in bad taste and uh, and then all these people start dropping like flies where in 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 the earlier seasons people dropped and bad things happened but you were built up to a crescendo as opposed to in the last two seasons it's like everybody was dropping like flies and you know i can understand that uh, but and I, I i didn't really even mind it that much um however the old expression all good things must come to an end well perhaps the show just should have ended there and then gone into the what about sal thing because i think that was a, a good deal but all good things must come to an end you know i just want to reflect for a minute I, you know i always say make well, i don't make fun anymore but uh you know i'm 66 so back in the 60s uh, for those of you who remember there also was a popular movie made of it i think in the 90s uh, there was a tv show that was called um the fugitive and uh, it was about uh, an innocent actor whose wife was raped and murdered by a one-armed man and chased by a lieutenant. I'm sure you all know about the fugitive. And, uh, but, you know, there were some statistics about the final night of the fugitive. And everybody knew that final night was coming up. And I think it had some of the highest ratings, if you consider how many people had TVs and shit like that at the time, than any other TV show ever. I mean, there was record numbers of people. And it was a fantastic ending. If any of you remember, um, uh, Richard Kimball pushes the one-armed man off of a tower, and then Lieutenant Gerard tries to apologize, and I don't remember what David Jansen does. But, you know, it, it, was, a, it was over, and it was done, and it was beautiful. And, it, and, you know, somebody tried to make a movie out of it, which I don't think was half as good as the series. But nonetheless, that's always the, well, I don't know if that's always the case, but I've seen it the opposite too, like like the Red Dragon and the Hannibal series. I think the Hannibal series was horrible, but I really liked the Red Dragon. But anyway, um, I, I think it was time for it to end as the, as the fugitive did. Um, but then Vince Gilligan decided to uh, put a twist to Breaking Bad's ending, and that was El Camino. Uh, after What About Sal, which I just don't get. I, I, I don't even know whatever happened to What About Sal because actually I cut off cable TV because I wasn't going to pay for that baloney anymore. And uh, so I don't even know if I saw how it ended, but I just loved it. It was a great show. And, uh, uh, but then, you know, Vince decides, he reminded me of a prize fighter who's had too many successes and he's getting too old to fight and he's going to go in the ring and get the shit beat out of him and end up with some sort of brain damage. I mean, that's what, what uh, El Camino reminded me of. He had to do it again. 
And then he had to pick Jesse, of all people, to center on, who's only good at doing a lot of... I mean, that's all he does. I mean, I mean, he does it well, okay? And in the right context, it's very appropriate. And, and uh, also, there's another thing I want to... Another point that's very important that I want to make about Jesse being the wrong character to focus on to make a sequel to Breaking Bad. And here it comes. You ready? Suspense builds. Well... You know how I always say that the sum is great, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It's one of my old therapy things. But anyway, um, I believe that um, actually what, what made Jesse was Walter. And what made Walter was Jesse. I said that earlier in the tape, but I don't know if people really can capture the uh, intensity of that. Some of the more beautiful parts of Jesse were exemplified over his concern, but also like love-hate relationship with Mr. White. And Mr. White was the same thing. I'm not sure that Brian Cranston would have been as effective in that role if uh, he didn't have Jesse to juxtapose to. So there was this circular relationship that actually was a character in and of itself. Okay? So if that's the if that's what was really made Jesse Jesse, then how can you make Jesse a movie about Jesse without Walter? You can't. It's impossible. And I think uh Vince you made a little mistake there. Not that I'm a director or could do any better. But, you know, as an observer and a fan of yours for so many years, uh, I was very uh, disappointed with it. And, and also, you know, another thing, too. Now, I really like the character of Mike, okay? But in many ways, think about it this way. There would be no Mike without Jesse. And see, there'd also be no Jesse without Mike. Because those two characters, if you remember, had this kind of unique... Um, narrative vibe between them of sort of attraction and avoidance and limits and exceptions and care and unnecessary discipline and you know i mean that's the way i saw it much like i saw walter white and jesse so here again you've got jesse kind of held up by two other characters um okay and and uh, therefore again how can you make a movie that's just based on jesse I'm not making fun of Jesse's uh, melodrama uh, because there's a place for that. And there was a place in Breaking Bad. But to make a movie about it, uh, about him, is, is just absolutely nowhere. So let's just go on a little bit more in some of my critique of the movie. There was no color palette. Um, there was nothing in that movie that could actually define like a, like a spirit or a vibe or a cast, a uh, atmosphere. There was no thought, it seems like, put into color, which really attracted me um, to the movie originally. Um, oh, here's another one. I'm sorry, because it's happening to me, too. It happens to us all. But it was a mistake, I think, in making a sequel. And that is, let's look at it, folks. A lot of the people that were in the original Breaking Bad series... Uh, many were at an age where you begin to look different as every year progresses, okay? And so, as I was watching El Camino, it was as if, like, many years had elapsed while Jesse's driving in a car, like where he left off. You know, it, it's like, um, every, I mean, I hate to be so critical, you know, but, like, they were all fatter, they were all rounder, um, like I said, they gave the appearance that a lot of time had elapsed, and yet this is supposed to be sort of like in the background of what was happening that you didn't know about, uh, and in terms of Jesse's, uh, emancipation from what, himself. Um, the, the other thing is that some might disagree with me, but, you know, 
I think timing in a movie is real important, and Breaking Bad really had it down. I mean, they they went up and down, and up a little bit and down, and up and down. I mean, it was it was really, you know, I oftentimes felt like a fish at the end of a hook, you know. Uh, however, El Camino, um, my son made the comment to me; he thought it was rather slow moving, um, and I would agree with him. It was very slow moving. But you know what? In a in a movie, sometimes there's a reason for things to be slow moving, and I'll reference the movie uh, No Country for Old Men, which is one of my favorites. Okay, that was very slow moving at times, and and, and you know if you didn't pay attention, sometimes you'd miss things. Uh, there were long different you know, dialogues but you know what would old no, no country for old men have been without the coin toss game or the actor whose name i regrettably can't remember who played the real bad guy you know i mean the, the toy toss game to me is is no country for old men or or watching you know the bodies floating in the swimming pool and even though it was a slow moving uh, motion picture, there was a lot of like, like intermittent intensity that would build. Um, and they're all very memorable scenes. Uh, however, in this movie, what was there that really happened that was very exciting? I, I'm looking back, I, I can't really think what was exciting except noticing how much older these people looked. You know, like they should have done some stage makeup or I don't know what, maybe found other characters. I, I don't know. But I think it was a mistake altogether because Jesse isn't Jesse without Walter and Jesse isn't Jesse without Mike. And um, Jesse's just, in, at least in as cast in El Camino, is just not a, a standalone actor. But you see... Uh, like I say, in No Country for Old Men, um, it, uh, it it really you know was played off very very well. I mean, what would what would Old Country No Country for Old Men have been if there wasn't that like car crash at the end that like you don't even see coming? It's like you're inside the car getting hit. You know, I mean that was dramatic. What happens in this? The only thing that happens of any like sort of excitement of any kind is at the end when. Uh, uh, Vince Gilligan decides to imitate Robert Rodriguez and has a massive explosion occurring uh, behind Jesse as he drives away victorious. Oh my God, was that exciting and liberating. I wanted to like, you know, uh, throw something at the television set, but uh, that would be rather ridiculous. So, um, you know, uh, Vince, maybe it... Uh, would better be a better suggestion for next time would be to uh make a movie called breaking good which would be about a sleazy lawyer who turns into a meth cook <laughs> that might be more intriguing but this was nothing it was just a bunch of events and some recollections and so you learned a little bit more about uh, a bunch of moron uh, trailer trash psychopaths. Well, I will give some credit to the blonde-haired dude. I don't know his name. He reminds me of that fellow who passed away, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. I, I hope I have that correct. I, I, I sort of wonder if he could pull off what he could do in so many different characters. But in that role, I, I do have to give him some credit. I'm not going to give it, you know, a, a, a complete uh, shitting on. Uh, I thought he was pretty good, and I think that it would have been more interesting if they would have expanded on him a little bit more. Because one thing I noticed uh, in terms of El Camino was that the blonde-haired guy seemed to have some autoerotic feelings about Jesse. And it was very subtle, but all those, you know, and he also sort of, the other thing about that character is if you remember, if any of you saw my Ray Ray uh, soup torture video, his demeanor was very much like the soup torture video guys, you know, who nurture a guy while he's forcing himself to eat garbage or something. You know, it, it reminded me um, a lot of that. He wanted to make him bean soup. He was touching him. He wanted, I mean, they could have gone into that, and that might have been interesting to see w w what would happen. But no, instead, you know, what does Jesse end up strangling him, I think, with a chain or something? I can't even remember. Really, if I can't, I have a great memory, and if, if I can't remember, then... 
it really wasn't uh, keeping my attention uh, going. So let's see if I have anything else to say. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea, though, to do a thing about a sleazy lawyer who turns into a meth cook. That might be uh, a good idea. So I guess as far as I'm concerned, I have to say that El Camino would have been better addressed as ending bad. And this has been Max Headroom. Thank you very much.